What is going on everyone? I'm back on the mic today from Spectral Sound and today I'm going to teach you how I recreated the main bass from Make It Happen by Yiro, Yiro, however you want to say it. Now you may not have heard this song before. If you have, then whoop de doo for you. If you haven't, then lucky for you, I have the song right here. Let's give the drop a listen. The main bass, that screechy pluck bass, is well it's not really a pluck, it's just kind of a kind of a lasery sound, so let's work with that. This is my little recreation I have right here that I just deleted. Way to go me. This is my recreation, you'll hear it right next to the original sound. I also threw in a sub bass, which is just a sine wave doing a little pluck motion, and then I also have a snare in there to fill in space, so let's listen to this. Now, I know this bass is not exact. It's I couldn't recreate it exactly. It took a long time for me to figure out how to make this bass, even though it isn't that difficult of a sound. It was hard for me to figure out. So I'm just gonna show you how I made it, and it's just kind of that style, to get that style of screech, not exactly that screech. And really what I, what I want everyone to take away from these tutorials is not that, okay, beautiful, now I have the sound and I can use it in my songs. It's like, oh, that's that's cool, I should try that with my own sounds and make some cool stuff. Now this right here is actually a basic shape. It's not, it looks funky, but that's because I have sync on it. And this is just the FM Freak from the digital, so it's all, it's all in zero. For the post-processing, I just have a soft clipper, which is adding a little bit of distortion, just a small extra cunt crunch, but mostly it's just making it loud, making it louder and stronger. And then I have an EQ, which is cutting off the high end pretty sharply, because if you see in the song, if you look up at the top, the high end is cut a around the same area and that's fine everything up above there you really can't hear it's all just super background and it sounded kind of staticky to me in this sound so I just did a little cut that's at 14,672 Hertz right there so that's just a, a really sharp cut and then I just rounded off the low end so we didn't get any messy black down at the bottom okay now I can also turn the sub off so now we just have serum. Oh, and there's also just a little bit of stereo widening. That's all I did. Yeah, I just turned this knob a little bit. So here we go. Let's turn everything off. Like I said, this sound is actually very simple to make. It, it's all about the FM. Like if you don't get the FM right, then it doesn't sound like the original, the original track. So let's just start with this. This is what we have right now. like nothing really and let me go let me go in this real quick I have LFO 1 which looks like this LFO 2 which looks like this and then LFO 3 which looks like this now real quick I'm just gonna go over everything that is in the matrix here that cannot be covered in these areas such as the master tune so for LFO 1 I routed it to the master tune in the global tab and I put it on unipolar and I brought it down negative 26, so you can see it does a little slide up. We can listen to this. So it just does a slide up to create that kind of lasery pitch effect. And I put the aux source for LFO2. This is going to be very important because I was listening to the sound and analyzing it, and I realized that there was more of a sweep upward in the first beat of the note. So it just went like it had a big warrant at the very beginning and it sounds weird when I'm saying it but that's just what I heard so you can hear it going there's more of a slide upward on the very first note so this is what that's doing right there I just have this set to here and this is controlling the output really so there's the full output for this LFO 1 modulation here when it's at the first slide, and then it goes to 50% output on the 
other slides continuing. And I have this on envelope so it'll always stay, always stay that way. For LFO3, I have assigned it to the master amp. Now, this is basically just to clean up the very end of the sound because it was trailing off too much. I wanted it to stop right before it went to the next cycle. So just, just one little eighth bar right there. And I have it down all the way and it's on bipolar. So that's why it's right in the middle. When it's at the top, it's all the way down and then it slides up. This also just kind of cleans up the sound a bit. And then it just drops down right at the end here. And here, I can turn it off and show you what it's like. This is what it's like. Let me also turn on the FM so you can hear it. And now this is with the amp modulation. Yeah, it just sharpens the sound a bit. All right, now let's get into the rest of the serum patch. Like I said, there is an FM freak here. For LFO1, is modulating the wavetable position from 56 down negative 18. So this is what we're seeing. They just have a little, a little movement there. And the FM is at 43%. That's a key percentile right there because you could make it sound a lot different by moving the FM around. Did I move it? No, I did not. Okay, good. That's just a, a fine tuning position right there. And I actually didn't get it until right before I recorded this video when I was going over. It was at a different percentage and I was just scrolling through trying to find the right percentage. And I fell on 43 and it sounded pretty good. So for the level, it is 75% going down negative 75. And again, this starts all the way up and then slides down. So when I say it's going down, yes, the modulation here, I'm keying it downward, but it's in reality, it's sliding up because it starts all the way up, which is down on the knob, and then slides down on the LFO, which is actually inverted, so it's going up on the level. So it starts at zero and then slides up to 100. If that made sense, that was probably kind of vague, and I could have made it simpler probably, but I, I trust you see what's going on here. It's just inverted. Now let's turn on oscillator B. I have a basic shapes on here. You don't have to worry about them too. And I just selected the last one there, wave tape position all the way up. This is a square saw mix. This is what it looks like without the sync. There it is right there. So we're gonna turn on sync window full right there. So we get this sort of shape once we turn it up. I have it up to 2.02% and it's going down with the LFO negative 40. So it's just sliding down there and it creates it creates a style shape. It's, it's like a sync, it's a normal sync, like this is just a normal sync. It's just adding more cycles of the waveform in there. But the sync half window is just sliding them down. It's acting like an X fade for the edges and just the sync window is just stronger than that. It just amplifies that, you know, ducking down of the corners. So the level for this is all the way down and I believe that's all we need right there. Oh yeah, the octave is up three for this one and the octave is down three for FM Freak. Now I do have it up one semitone. You can mess with the semitones here because it, it'll make it sound different. Let me just do that real quick. It just sounded like it was just a little bit higher than it was in the patch, so I just bumped it up an octave. Okay, or not an octave, excuse me, a semitone. That, one, that would've been bad. For the noise, let's turn this on. I don't have a sub in this one, so it's just a noise and the two other oscillators. For the level, it's at 29%, going down with the modulation negative 26. So just sliding it up there. And this one, I've been really getting into this. This is the Horns of Fear. If you go into SOR and go down, you can hit Horns of Fear, and it actually has a lot of tone to it. You can hear it just by itself. Of course, it is going up with the modulation, but it sounds like these synth sort of, you know, droning kind of horns. So I also turned on the key tracking, and I turned the pitch up 44%. And now that just gives it a lot higher of a tone. Without the key tracking, this is what we hear. It's the same pitch everywhere. I wanted it to match the pitch of the original of the original oscillators there. So we turn on key tracking and turn the pitch up 44 in, so it's in the higher register. That just adds a little more depth. It's hard to hear when you turn on everything else, especially the effects when the distortion comes in. 
but it just fills it out in the background. That's, that's what I heard, so I liked it and added it in there. All right, so let's turn on the other oscillators. The filter. I only have the noise going through the filter. There was a lot of distortion when I go into the effects, and I it was messing with this noise and creating a lot of low frequencies that were strange. So I just cut out all the low frequencies from the noise. I have the cutoff here at 1334 hertz. This is just the high 12, so it's super simple stuff. No drive or fat, and the mix is all the way up. So basic out of things. The resolution is at three, not resolution, resonance whew, is at 3%. I uh, don't think that matters that much. You, you get the gist. It's just ducking things down. Okay, and now on to the effects. Disto first. Look at that right there. All right, we have a line fold. It's not a sign fold that I usually use. It's just the lines, which is the same thing as a sign fold, except it's a triangle wave, not a sine wave. So the drive for this one is at 15% and it's going up with LFO modulation 8. So we have a good bit of distortion going on here with just a little bit of modulation and that just uh, makes it really thick and you can really hear the disto. Yeah, that's super screechy right there. That's really piercing. So let's compress things down a bit. Now I actually did some wacky stuff here with the compressor. It makes it all the way up. I turned the gain to 7.3 decibels, but the threshold is like negative 72.7 it's super high the ratio stays the same four to one and i didn't mess with the time variables but you can see you can see what's going on here when you turn the threshold all the way up which makes it really quiet but then turn up the game you can still get the same feel that you have from turning the threshold all the way up just louder which is kind of normal but i don't usually mess with the game too much all right the highs are at 200 percent the mids are at 170 and the lows are at zero percent so you can see how it's pushing it right there. Now this is what we got. There we go. All right, let's throw some hyper dimension on it, make it a little bigger. I'm well, actually not using the hyper in this one. I was trying to use it, but it didn't sound very good. So the size is all the way down, and the mix is at 50%, going down negative 50. So it's just starting at zero and sliding up there. All right, for the chorus, I have the rate at 0, 0.00. I have the delay at 0, 0.0 as well. That's milliseconds. And delay 2 at 0, 0.3, so just super tight. Depth is at 15.5 for this one, and the feedback is just at 10%. I have the low-pass filter all the way up for this one. That's the big numbers right there. So we get all of the frequencies in the chorus. I just mixed it in a bit at 34%, just somewhere around there. Of course, just adds a little bit of depth. Yeah, all right. Now let's go into the EQ. Let's see what I did for this. Oh yeah, I have just a little peak that I'm modulating here. The frequency is at 1519 hertz, going down negative 36. However, since this is inverted, the peak is sliding up with the action of the pitch. So the gain is also at 9.5, going down negative 21. So it starts at like no gain and it slides up and the peak rises as it goes up higher in the register. So the Q factor is at 52%, uh, just somewhere around there. And I didn't use the uh, filter over here. So now this is what we got. It just bo boosts that fundamental frequency right there, and I thought it sounded nice, so that's what we got. For the delay, I have the mix actually all the way down. However, it is modulating up with envelope one. It is going up 40. So when I'm holding down a note, I get a delay, and then when I release it, you don't get any delay. Now, this isn't really delaying that much. It's just a super tight metallic delay because when you unlink them and you turn the BBM off, you get these sort of numbers. And when you make them both really small and really tight for the left and the right, you get this like flanger effect. I can turn the mix all the way up so you can see what I'm talking about. This is just a delay and not any of the dry sound. It's like really, really wide and you get these, these nice harmonics. It sounds kind of like a flanger. 
but and this is very similar to what a flanger does working with super tight delay for left and right but and we just have a little bit of filtering nothing nothing drastic you're getting basically all the frequencies here so just mixing that in and the feedback is at 49 percent 50 percent whatever you like now did i add a filter in this uh, i think i was going to add a reverb filter however i did not want to add the reverb filter it was messing up the sound too much as it likes to do but yeah that's all we got all right so now with the post-processing and everything on, this is what we get. All right, and you just learned how to make a Euro, Yiro, what the heck style bass. Like I said, this isn't an exact recreation. This is more of just me showing you how to make that kind of style, that sort of feel to your basses especially using the FM and using sync with it. I actually don't mess with the sync too much. However, it was very useful in this scenario. And just for fun, let me show you what it's like without any sync or anything. It still has that effect, but the sync just adds a whole new, just adds more harmonics and really just kind of makes it different. It it's, makes it less boring and kind of unique. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like below. Tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Also subscribe for more sound design videos, at least one each week. I'm trying to do more, but once, the, once I get off break, I'll see how things go. I may only be able to do one a week, but I'll still be getting to them, and I'll still be getting to your, your requests. I have a lot of requests, and they're coming in faster than I can make them. I'm like, eh, but I'll get to, I'll get to them. All right, as always, peace out.